Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Love Our Love Cast podcast. Sometimes love Cast is love good. Cast. We used to say that. Okay. Um, as always, we're going to start the podcast by thanking our sponsor. They are a tour sponsor, podcast sponsor, and that is none other than African Pride. Thank you so much for partnering with us through the tenure of the tour. Um, as you know, we're giving out free boxes of product. It has curl cream, um, it has edge control, it has a scarf, it has like an edge brush, it has all the things shot for free. All you have to do is go on to Kevin's Instagram page. Why would you do this to me? <laughs> uh, go on Kevin's Instagram page and type the word, I don't know what should they do, at Miss Kevin's page. Sure. Spam my comments with Melissa. Spam name. my spam his comments, whatever his <laughs> most recent Instagram picture is at the time that this drops. Spam it with Miss Kev on stage, and we will randomly pick a winner from there. All right, let's get started with the episode. <laughs> Welcome to the Love Hour Love Podcast. I'm your host, Ms. Kim on stage. You just did that again. I know. I don't know why. Um, I'm joined by my husband and co-host. The Kev on stage. And if you're wondering what we're doing and why we're looking the way we're looking, specifically me, I'm not glammed up. <laughs> you look beautiful though. At all. I feel like I look 15. Um, with the braids? Yes, with the braids and like the no makeup. Like I literally feel like I'm about to go to PE. You got something white in your braids. I'm going to take it out. It's like you like rubbed it against something. Oh, it's from being on the plane. It has to be from the plane. I have no idea what it is. We're in Chicago, by we're, the way. Uh, so we're in Chicago at Jason's brother's house. No, Kevin's um, brother's house. Right. Let it's me Kevin's just pause this for a second and show you this man's backyard area. I mean, look at this. It's so nice. I mean, come on here. We tried to shoot this way, but it was just too hot. This man just out here living his best life, ain't he? He really is. So, um, for you audio listeners, you didn't get that. Oh um, yeah, I forgot. Oh, Sorry about that. <laughs> I forgot audio listeners. Yeah. Just imagine gardens. You hear some bugs. Yeah. Just it's a beautiful guys. Day, we though. just we, we wanted to get the podcast up. We needed to get the podcast up, but we, um, we yesterday were, uh, I had a gazillion things to do because we were in town basically for like a day and a half. And um, I needed to get my hair braided, and they filmed the other podcast. I had a doctor's appointment. I had a fa I had a bunch of things. So, to do. That was a lot. Yeah, it was just a we lot. We had to go to dinner with the baby. Yeah, it was just a lot getting done and or trying to squeeze into like you know a very limited time period. And so we decided to film in Chicago. We were initially going to film with um, Tammy, who is Jason's wife. Um, which, by the way, while we're here, we got to say thank you to everyone who supported and watched and like all the comments and love for the last episode. I want to say I have like 22,000 uh, views on my YouTube page on that. Really? Yeah, Is that see. the biggest one? Yeah. Oh, for sure. Um, but thank you guys so much for Miss Kevin Sage Book Club. Um, 35,000. Wow. All we did is cry the whole time. Yeah, seriously. Thanks so, to Melissa. So thank you guys. I, I was know, mad for real. I don't know, I know if y'all thought this was. There's a bunch of people that are like, I'm mad at Melissa too. Good. I mean, everyone's like playing, but I mean, I, I get how. I'm not playing. I get how like it was an emotional episode, and um, Jason was even saying like the outpouring of love and support has just been like so. Yeah, overwhelming. he said he can't even watch the episode. I didn't want to, and then I ended up watching it like crying times. again. Yeah, so that was I was cool. crying just trying to cut a little piece to promote it i cried i was like man yeah it was a lot going on so anyway thank you guys so much for that um we appreciate the love appreciate the support and it's by far the biggest episode that we've had thus far i need to put it on your page you keep uh, saying that but I you know, don't do it i just you need to just give serena access so she can do it. ain't nobody getting the password oh he can i say studios or mm -mm. oh no i don't give the password yeah. out um, josh don't even have that pass no one has that password but you yeah anyway <laughs> um so uh thank you guys so much and just bear with fair uh bare face melissa this is my face but we're gonna start with our this or that question that um, or this that or this 
in the title she said this or that in the subject line so these are um uh, listeners submitted so thank you guys for submitting these if you're interested in submitting a that or this with kevin list question um you can send them to hello at the love hour.com the question is or she says hi guys faithfully watch anything from kevin sage studios thank you so much so my that or this is would you rather always have your meals cold or always have your drinks warm love you guys i can't think of anything to clarify i'm sure you'll find something to ask though man that's funny I, um, I, my, my answer is clear and quick drinks warm drinks warm mine too i cannot i can't do cold food all the time yeah me either the, I even just, like cold food like that is meant to be cold like the cheese plate you had today or meat oh, and cheese yeah, plate yeah. like I'd be needing a hot meal. Yeah, I would much rather warm drinks you can like get over. Um, Cause even like, I would prefer warm temperature water for the most right. part anyway. But can but, you imagine being super thirsty and have to drink some warm water or, or hot water? Yeah, that would suck. But this is the other thing that's worse though than that to me is like a cold day and going home and eating cold soup. Why would you eat cold too? Oh, you're saying if you have this. Yeah. Oh, got it. Like, I would be upset. Yeah, I'd be needing a hot breakfast. I'd be needing hot lunch. I'd be needing hot. Yeah, I need I need the hot. I'm definitely going to uh, take my uh, warm drink. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to get started. So, um, this wildlife is going ham in the background. I know, it's so loud. I like it though. Okay, so last week, like we said, we talked about um, Jason, and I'm, I want to do a part two. I just don't know when. Maybe we'll do it while we're out of town. Mm -hmm. they'll, be, um, they'll be with us. Yeah, they'll be with us. So maybe we'll do it then. But from that spawned a lot of, I don't know, did it unearth some things inside of you? <sighs> Kev was so mad, by the way. I I think we said that, but he was like legit. Was legit. I so here's the thing. First of all, I don't feel that good. My stomach kind of hurts. So if I look despondent or sound despondent, it's because I have a slight headache and my stomach. I have like heart. I don't know what's going on, mm. but I don't feel a hundred percent. But do y'all care? Mm -hmm. You need your potty. Um, Melissa has been tasking me with feeling my feelings more. Kevin, I need you to be more vulnerable. Kevin, lean into those feelings. Kevin, why are you trying to hide from your feelings so much? Okay, Kevin, but can Kevin, we provide Kevin. context? Because it's not like I'm just like, I want you to feel your feelings for okay, the what's sake the context? of feeling your feelings. I want to... So, going back to something Shamira said on the podcast is that um, intimacy is being seen, heard, and being valued. And so I feel that I don't always, I, I'm not always given the opportunity to fully see you because you aren't sharing all of those parts of yourself. No, I'm Batman. Those so parts I'm not are just, the dark recesses so of So I'm not mind. just trying to like feel your feelings. I'm trying to like build intimacy, like create intimacy and create a bond that's deeper than where we currently are. I understand that, but you're asking me to do stuff that I don't want to. No, I get that. I'm just providing the context as to why I'm asking. Yeah, so. I think the first. So we'll start with the last week's episode. Okay, but before we go there, I want to just say this, that I we're either going to call this episode Kevin is an emotional wreck or emotional integrity. Um, my sister, we just went out to dinner and I feel like this will be like kind of the backdrop for everything we're about to say. That's kind of why I stopped. Okay. Um, we went out to dinner last night cause we haven't seen my sister in a while. And, um, she was talking about, um, her therapist has been encouraging her to like speak up and you know, those type of different things. And with that, she said just recently there was an incident at work where she spoke up about it and she came back to me and I harp on the boys all the time about like being emotionally honest, having emotional mm -hmm. integrity, which means if you feel a certain way, don't just say I'm okay. Like actually voice, you know, how you actually feel. And she was like, oh my God, I really feel like this is the first time in my life where like I was being emotionally honest. I was having emotionally, uh, emotional integrity because I was saying what I was speaking. And I think to me, my definition of integrity is being 
fully integrated, being whole, being not being undivided or not being divided, uh, undivided. Yeah. Um, meaning your words line up with your mind, mm -hmm. your actions line up with your mind. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of times what happens is that we may feel or think a certain way but we tell ourselves to respond differently as if those feelings are wrong, yes. as if those feelings are invalid and trying to, or we suppress them. Yeah. And so not dealing with something, does it make them not exist? True. Um, and so unaddressed feelings, you know, it, they're just unaddressed. It's not like they're not there. And so I'm encouraging you, I'm encouraging me, I'm encouraging all of us to have that like, emotional integrity and acknowledging all of our feelings the good the bad the ugly the whatever the sad the high the low fears concerns whatever they are um because that's emotional integrity i agree okay the thing that i was trying to um impress upon you uh I, or i felt like you were uh the, the narrative that I was telling myself okay, these are good words. is is that um, you know uh, I don't know I, I'm trying to understand well, what I would tell you when you would say how do you feel about stuff I would be like you know I, I, I didn't want you to think I didn't want to talk to you about it and I thought about it a lot and just was like nah I'm not going to share mm -hmm. I have trained myself if you guys watch Ozark I'm, I told Melissa this the other day I'm basically Jason uh, Bateman. Bateman's character Marty Bird where he just, like they have so much stuff going on that he, he just compartmentalizes things, uh, tragic or otherwise. Yeah, he compartmentalizes all. everything, right? And then uh, towards the end of the second season, this is really a spoiler alert uh, for the show, but all those emotions eventually catch up with him, right? And I had, basically without even knowing it, I have trained myself to not feel certain things um so for to example not acknowledge them and then thereby not, not even not them. acknowledge them to just well because i remember you saying that like sometimes they pop in your mind and then you're just like nope okay so let's go to with, with jason okay. um with the whole uh cancer scenario and all that type of stuff that is an example of something you would feel feelings you'd be like scared or whatever you spend more time together all that type of stuff <clears throat> i had almost successfully just been like nah almost or like successfully successfully <laughs> <laughs> successfully uh just been like nah i don't mm -hmm. i couldn't even let those thoughts enter so that's why the podcast you know that's why i didn't want to do it that's why those emotions are so raw. It wasn't like we talked about all the time. Then we were just sharing it on the episode. I didn't think about that at all. Right. So I was telling you this the other day. I ended up crying on Periscope um, talking about him. And it, it was it was weird because I wasn't even talking about him that long. I was just talking about the tour. And I'll say, oh, you know, my plan was my brother was going to uh, do this, but he got sick. And then within... 15 seconds I was crying right. and that was I was telling I was telling Liz like maybe that's because those feelings are so unfelt that the mere like thought of them yes happen you know the thought of them is like you know it, it's kind of like a, a sensitive, soda it, it, well, you know like a like a two liter soda mm -hmm. like you drop that on the second or on the ground or whatever when you open it you like a crack yeah and it's it's, it's that's kind of I feel like uh how how that scenario was and you started asking those questions and i was just like man because I, I i i tend to let my imagination run wild negatively or positively mm -hmm. so when it's negative things like you know you know being diagnosed with cancer the first thing you think of is uh he's so young you could die people die life shortened you know it's my only brother you know all that stuff and in order to not go down that path i would rather just not think about it at all and I know that's not healthy. Right. But I just don't want to. Oh. I, I just didn't want to think like that. You didn't want to think like that because you're afraid of the scenario. You're afraid of the, like, leaning into those emotions, what you're going to feel. Like, what are you, what's the fear? 
this might sound illogical, but it, it's one of the fears. If you think about it, it might come true. Oh, I think I don't think that's illogical. I think a lot of people have those same. It's just the feeling where um, we were talking to um, Tony Baker the other day, and he had like really good news, and he didn't want to share it because he felt like he was going to. Oh yeah, it. yeah. I, guess um, so. I think a lot of us have that like that same fear that like I don't want to jinx this. I don't want to think about this too much. I don't want to be too happy. Um, I don't want to think too much about you know too far into this because what if it doesn't happen? Instead of like. I don't know, leaning into those moments or taking the opportunity to lean in and um, directing your thoughts another way. Yeah. Um, and I think that's what I was trying to get out. Like, so the reality is that your brother is sick. Like that is a reality. Um, but what you was don't- Was sick. Was sick. Yeah. Um, but what you don't want to do, what I believe is that what you don't want to do is not acknowledge that truth and thereby not doing things that you would had you. Example, so I can make it make sense. If I know my brother was sick and potentially life expectancy is short or whatever the case may be, mm -hmm. if you're going about life as if he wasn't, if something were to happen to him, you didn't live the moment as if he meaning you didn't spend time with him mm -hmm. meaning you didn't call him meaning you didn't check on him but i did do that him. stuff no. i just didn't do it under that guise so if something were to have i don't want to use your brother because this is a kind of a yeah, yeah this is a lot for me yeah, right I was now just like, that's why i stopped looking at the camera yeah uh that it got heavy for me too but if something were to happen you don't want to go with regret no yeah and so i feel like being able to like acknowledge my brother is sick but i'm so grateful for these moments that i have with him that's mm. what i was saying like i'm so grateful that um the tour to him was a big deal that was and now it makes sense yeah you know what i mean to me um so now that i know that even the more like cherishing these moments right it's kind of like those conversations that we have when we talk about um the boys when we were younger and not having the money and just living life. And sometimes I wish I could relive when they were small as a more stable, financially stable right. person, because you can cherish those moments a lot more. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, um, speaking of cherishing the moments, it's also important to cherish your dollars. Yes. Uh, and uh, as entrepreneurs, small business owners, we um, strongly believe in having multiple streams of income. And so we have a merch business and um, selling merch can be very lucrative, but it also can be very expensive. And very time consuming. And time consuming. Actually, both of those things yes. are true. Um, you have to pay for shipping, you need to pay for your the raw materials, and you need to pay for like packaging stuff. Yes. And all of those things can be they add up and they're going to cut into your bottom line Absolutely. if you're not smart about it. Uh, so we have partnered with ShipStation, which is an online shipping platform that will integrate with whatever platform you're using to sell your materials. Most uh, platforms. So whether that's Amazon, whether that's Etsy, I have actually used, um, I have a book called Journey to Self-Love and I have uh, sold it on, um, uh, what is it called? Sh uh, sh uh, Ease Envy. Etsy? Store Envy, no Store Envy, oh. um, and they actually um, integrate with them. So what happens is you use them, and they help you simplify. So you can pull in whether you're sh uh, mm -hmm. selling merchandise on Amazon, whether you're shipping, uh, selling merchandise on Etsy, whether you're sh uh, selling merchandise on Shopify. All of these different platforms sometimes they can be very overwhelming. Yes. Um, and so what they'll do is allow you to pull all of those into streamlined. one, streamline it into one platform, give you a nice rate and then you can ship out your products it's going to save you time it's going to save you money and those are commodities you cannot get back well your time child. you can get money back but you can't get your time back so right now if you're a small business owner you follow us because we're entrepreneurs we inspire you you want to start your own um, merch line or whatever it is um definitely highly recommend um doing so and looking into ship station Right now, Love Our listeners can try ShipStation for free for 60 days when you use the promo code LOVE, that's L-O-V-E. There's absolutely no risk. You can start your free trial without even entering your credit card information. They're for real.
Uh, just visit shipstation.com. Click on the microphone at the top of the homepage and type in love. That's shipstation.com, then enter promo code love. Shipstation.com, make ship happen. <laughs> okay, so, um, so you've been in, like, since last week's episode, you've been in a state of feeling your feelings. Emotional turmoil. You've been in emotional turmoil. You've been in emotional wreck. Tell us what you've been thinking about and going through. So the, the, the one probably that's the most prevalent is, um, this is why I was crying today. I was already, I shoot, what time is it? Five o'clock or something. I've already cried twice today. Um, it's 421. 420. One for one reason and one for the other. So the, the most, uh, thing that I feel the most bad about is the kids so we talked about this before but you know uh Joe was basically like man y'all need to be home more mm -hmm. like the, the the extent of the tour travel is weighing on him. I was actually thinking should I tour whenever we do it again a compressed time yeah like six tough weeks or two months tough and then be done yeah, yeah, yeah. you know uh I feel like that might be easier and harder but at least the rest of the year I'll be, be done you know I'll talk to him about that with you. But anyway, I have this guilt. And I realize I have parental guilt. It's very similar to when I used to have to drop him off at work. I used to be like, man, it sucks that. You know, because little kids, they don't want to go to daycare. They don't want to do, nope. They just don't want to go, man. You, and then Joe was so young. And I take Isaiah to school and Joe to daycare. And, they would, and there was a lot of times Melissa and I worked uh, really early. Mm -hmm. So the kids would have to be like plenty of times. The first kids in the classroom. Especially when we worked at Boeing, I used to be at work before 5.30 regularly, like taking my All lunch at nine, mm -hmm. my lunch break, uh, nine or 10. Um, and I would feel guilty just dropping them off. So, you know, imagine multiplying that by not seeing them, you know, being gone Thursday, you know, for this tour, mostly because we live in LA, in order to get to those East Coast uh, cities, you almost always have to fly on Thursday night because there's no there's very rarely a flight that can get to you know Virginia or New York right. in in time to get ho get to the hotel checked in showered, showered to the, and then to the venue yeah. for a six o'clock show like right. and I didn't realize when I was doing stand up on my own and not touring mm -hmm. I used to be able to fly out a lot on Saturday mm -hmm. because I wouldn't have to you would go get, straight to the venue yes and I would go right to the stage sometime right, right. I'd be at the hotel for like an hour mm -hmm. maybe it was very rare that I had to leave on Friday uh friday night but for this tour because we're doing it on our own it's it's very rare that i can leave on friday so anyway um and it was one thing to think that and another to miss my kids but it became a whole nother to actually like have it voiced absolutely and it was just like i mean it, 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 daycare was bad and it was this is just it is just gut-wrenchingly tough yep. you know and we and the thing that's kind of crazy is even the, the boys be doing fun stuff. Like, yeah. they're not being hurt. No. They go visit their cousins or whatever. They're having a good time. And then they get to go to Spain. And, you know, we were talking about this. Hopefully, they get appreciated. I'm sure they'll appreciate it later. They will. But for now, they want to just be at home with me and you there in the rooms. They Like, you don't need to even sit under us. Like, Joe will sit up in our room and just play his games, his Switch. And that's all he wants And he'll to just be on our bed. Just be in there. He'll fake it's sleep in our bed. Of home. It's the comfort of home. When the boys are in there, because even this week, we're only home for a day, but when the kids are not there, the house feels weird. Yeah, it's quiet. Yeah, I, I didn't even realize how many times I go in there and just be like, what y'all in here yeah. doing? Farting? Yeah. And I'll like, you know, stand in front of the TV or, you know, pull their socks off yeah. and then just leave. And they just be like, Dad, <laughs> Father, and Zay Zay be away. like, Father Way. <laughs> I say, What's up to Zay Zay probably a hundred times. <laughs> what up, Zay? <laughs> Hello, Father. Like, he always answers me. It's your routine. It's just the routine. So having my kids say that, I was just like, I'll quit stand-up comedy right now. But I knew that wasn't the answer because it just, mm -hmm. you know. It, it, and that's the thing about life, too, a little bit off topic. The answer very rarely is as if simple as, oh, as no. oh, I'll just do this. Yeah, no. Because then I go back to, you know, whatever job. I'm still not going to be able to see them every yeah. second of every day. It's balancing their wishes and your, yes. and what you want to do. Yes. But, so this is the reason why I was crying. I was watching this movie, Chef, and the, the guy, uh, John Favreau, or Favreau, I'm not sure how you pronounce it, Favreau, I think it is. 
he's a chef and his son just wants to be around. Okay. So he got divorced and he was taking his kid around, uh, you know, the fun stuff, movies, amusement parks. And then in one scene, his son is just showing him how to use Twitter. And the kid is like about JoJo's age, a little older maybe. Um, and he's like, man, I, I, I enjoy this. And, he's, and the dad, you know, he was like, really? And he was like, yeah. He's like, I thought you want to, you know, he said, usually you always take me to do fun stuff, which I don't mind, mm -hmm. but, you know, because the dad was like, I thought you enjoyed doing fun stuff because I don't get to see you that much. Yeah. And he was like, I just enjoy hanging out and talking mm -hmm. as well. Like just being around you because the kid wanted to follow him to work and he buy right. ingredients. So as the movie goes on, he, he, he ends up like basically incorporating more time with his son. So the thing that made me cry is his son had made a, a one second a day video. So you take one second each day and then you string them together. So mm -hmm. they basically spend the summer together. So at the end of the like road trip, he sends her the video. And it's all these little moments in it. And I was just like, me, 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 my children. <coughs> I didn't understand my. when you were explaining to me earlier. That's actually really sweet. It was so sweet. Yeah. And they weren't even all great moments. Like one, his dad was kind of fussing at him. You know what I mean? But it was just like, you know, your kids want to be involved. Mm -hmm. in your life they're more aware than we give them credit for 100%. they're more more emotional than we give them credit for i made this joke uh video earlier this week and it was like had, were you ever asked anything as a kid how you felt about situations and we weren't we just weren't raised like yeah, that we but we try to do that with our kids mm -hmm. and the thing is even though we weren't asked we felt you have way. feelings yeah 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 Yeah, you and, and you, you hush up boy you know you can't cry even when we like fall and bleed yeah. stop crying you 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 know boys don't cry you being weak whatever and you know your parents just didn't want to hear that but that didn't stop you from feeling it right you just didn't have a coping mechanism um and maybe that's also part of the reason why it's so hard because i'm a i'm a man yeah. uh uh it, we it, grew up in that era where you know, a child's place was quiet you know and it's then, funny too because as you're talking i realized uh the other day the boys were having a moment at the cousin's house and kayla which is uh, jason's oldest one of his daughters uh, older she's 17 and she gets on the phone and she's like and um she says um isaiah you know he's so smart like he always talks and i just remember when aunt melissa would when joe isaiah was younger aunt melissa used to always say use your words use your words mm -hmm. use your words mm -hmm. and i was like i didn't even realize it but i did i used to always tell the boys because they would just be crying and i'm like i don't understand your your tears <laughs> right. I need you to use your words. Right. What's wrong? Tell, say it in, you know, I'm hurt. My brain hurts. I need you. My feelings are hurt. I need you to articulate what's wrong because I don't understand tears. Um, and so like making that connection that now. Now that's I, instilled in them. Yeah. And so he really is. I don't know that I did it that much with, like, with Joe though. Uh, but I distinctly remember doing that with Isaiah. Actually, I did do it with Joe, but probably not as much. Um, re doing that with Isaiah and like mm -hmm. giving him that opportunity to voice whatever it was that was wrong with him. And he will. He's much better at um, doing that. Isaiah? Mm -hmm, than oh, Joey yeah. is. But going to your point that like you, we didn't have the time or space to do that. And then allowing him that space and now being able to see him, you know, like fully articulate himself. Yeah. And I think even in my family, I was telling you this the other night, we were having a, a discussion about this. And I was telling her, like, in my family, we didn't necessarily have secrets, but there was definitely stuff that just didn't get talked about. Mm -hmm. So we just didn't like and we would just go on about the day. You know what I mean? And so I, I, I guess I trained myself to compartmentalize yeah. you know um and lately i've been trying to understand you know the the boy stuff it has been a, somebody asked me this on instagram they're like how do you deal with fame and your celebrity status and like how are you dealing with it i didn't answer it because i was trying to pick the funny questions but that's the hardest thing to deal with wait be specific what's the, the, hardest, the hardest thing, thing to deal with with my rising status it is the, the the best part of the travel part happening but taking me taking it away from my kids is the hard part and and knowing that it's not a there's not a quick fix for that no there's just you know we have our our we'll do this we'll do that you know but there's going to be times where mm -hmm. the boys are away from us and it's going to be hard for them and and that's common with a lot of business owners i remember when i used to listen to how i built this they they a lot of them were like as our uh they they call it the 
well, the years where we are building our business. Right. They they often say it's really hard on your children. Well, you know, sure. that's a huge sacrifice. <laughs> yeah, because you work like crazy. You work like a dog, and I mean, I travel, which makes it worse. But some people are in in the house, in the office, or... office, ten, twelve hours. You know, a day. You know, when we first started ADD, people, were, you know, we we be in there. I wouldn't get home until 8, 8.30, mm -hmm. 9 o'clock. The boys would be going to bed. Michelle Obama's book, you were talking about that. Mm -hmm. uh, she was trying to wait for uh, Barack to come, come home, home, and the kids would miss him, but he would be gone, yeah. you know? And he, was, he wasn't he was even the president at that nope. time. He was just a senator. And I, I know that happened, you know, during the White House. That was very, very formative years Absolutely. of Sasha Malia's life. Sasha Malia's life. So, of course, they have to deal with that. But knowing that other people are going through it doesn't make it easier for you sure. to handle it. You right. know what I mean? Because I still, when we pick Joe up, he, I, the combination of his love for family and his age, mm -hmm. he, Isaiah's, I'm cool, you know. <laughs> well, he's at, um, my friends are cooler than my family. Yeah, but Joe is like, yeah, he run, literally run and jumps in my arms. Mm -hmm. And he like, I'm not letting you go. I'm not letting you go. And he'll hold on as long as he like physically can. And it feels so good. And then when he le when we leave, it'd be, it'd be so sad. Yeah. That's how you want to say? Yeah. Okay. Um, speaking of holding on and not wanting to leave, we have partnered with Third Love. And their bras will hold on to each oh, other. Oh, God. But not in a bad way. Uh, they lift, they separate, and they're comfortable. <laughs> These are all important things. Um, if you don't know, I have a book club. In my book club, this is one of the things I will be giving away in my Alyssa's Box of Loves, where I'll be giving away um, a box of things that I love and enjoy and like. Join my book club. I've been MIA for a little while, but after the tour's over, I'm going to be back better than ever. That's a side note. Um, but I will be giving away a Third Love bra. Um, Third Love comes in more than 70 sizes. They have a signature half sizes. You just take a Fit Finders quiz that help you identify your breast size and shape, thus finding the best bra for you. Plus, they have a 100% fit guarantee. You have 60 days to wear it, wash it, and put it to the test. And if you do not love it, you can return it. And Third Love will wash it and donate it to a woman in need. Returns and exchanges are easy and free. Hands down, the most comfortable bra I own. I have one on right now, and I flew from last night to this morning. That says a lot, because travel bras, you want to have a good, good, comfortable bra. And folks have been, y'all be tagging me in my uh, DMs when y'all buy them, and y'all be like, yeah, these are legit. So, Third Love knows a perfect bra for everyone. So, right now, they're offering our listeners 15% off your first order. Go to thirdlove.com slash lovehour now to find your perfect fitting bra and get 15% off your first purchase. That's thirdlove.com slash lovehour. That's L-O-V-E-H-O-U-R for 15% off today. Um, we also want to tell you about Brewmate. We've talked about them before. It is still summer. Uh, when's summer in? August 21st? Something like that? That was September 20th. September 20th? When does summer start? June? June 20th. July? Oh, it is. Um, so it's still summer. It means it's still barbecue season, which means if you're barbecuing, you want to have nice, cool drinks. Um... I like wine, I like cold wine. And so what Brewmate does is it allows you to keep your wines cool. It's insulated drinkware designed to keep your favorite beverages ice cold all day long. Whether that's beer, wine, or spirits, brew it. Brewmate makes sure every sip is the perfect temperature. We have, first of all, anything that is functional and pretty to look at are things that I'm always interested in. We have the Carrera style, and um, it's kind of like a marble style, but they also have this glitter. It's like a rose gold glitter style, which I'm thinking about buying. I'm not gonna lie to you, I saw it today, and I was like, well, that's pretty. Um, they have a charcoal glitter. It's almost like a holographic style. Very, very pretty, very nice to look at. They're really good gifts if one of your friends is like a, um, a uh, barbecue master. They love barbecue and having people over and having get togethers. These are good gifts for these people. They have birthdays in the summer, you know, that type of thing. So don't settle for warm wine because warm wine is not good wine. 
you ask me. Uh, chill out with your favorite drinks all day long with Brewmate. Visit brewmate.com and add code TLH to get 15% off your first order. That's brewmate.com. That's B-R-U-M-A-T-E. Use the code TLH to get 15% off your first order. That's 15% off your first order when you go to brewmate.com. B-R-U-M-A-T-E dot com and add the code TLH again for 15% What else are you worried about? My. <laughs> what else are you emotionally? The, are I'm you a, done with the kids? Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, that's why I was crying on the plane. You were asleep. It was funny. I've cried on planes twice because of movies. That and Me Earl and the Dying oh, Girl. Yeah, too, uh, that one was much, much worse. And even like um, the boys were with Tam over the summer. Uh, like the last weekend. Last week. And she sent us this video of them playing with water guns. Can I have some of that? Mm -hmm. Water guns and water balloons. And I was just about to go on stage. And I watched that and I was crying mm -hmm. because they were happy. I, I was just like, man, look at them just playing in the sun as cousins. And I then think, I was crying. I think that you're having like these... Um, Emotional breakdowns? Yeah, breakdown moments because you're not used to feeling your feelings all the time. And so right now you're like like acutely aware of them like more so you're more sensitive to them yes and so that's why like every little thing it's like you're you this it's like the, swung yes all the way that's the what i was side. about to say you went from here all the way over here and you just have to find like that balance that allows you to like feel your feelings and realize that that's okay learn how to deal with them in whatever way that means um so you're not always having a breakdown but also recognizing that sometimes breakdowns are good and that is what you need you need but sometimes it's just, um, or I think right now it's just a matter of like recalibrating and finding that balance that allows you to feel your feelings all the time. I think for me, the other thing that's making it hard for me uh, emotionally is you're asking me to be more emotionally vulnerable. And it's like, it's such a hard thing to do because, what do you mean? okay, I'm going to tell you what I mean. Tell me more. If you said, Kevin, I need your help around the house. Mm -hmm. And I, okay. I, I don't help around the house much. I come in the house, dishes need to be done. Wash the dishes, take the trash out, sweep, mop, whatever. That is a thing that is easily fixable. If you, you know what I mean? This, what, what, one thing I've told you a couple times is you want me to share my feelings, but I don't even be sharing them with myself. Mm -hmm. So you're asking me to acknowledge them and share them with you when I don't even acknowledge them to begin with. So. And you've talked about it before, before, before. And it's a hard thing to feel like you are making progress in it. So we have, these, you know, we were talking the other night. And um, I, I wouldn't even say we were arguing. We just had a, a tense discussion. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I confided in you that I'll share with the podcast now that I, I, I feel like I think I don't know if it's imposter syndrome, mm -hmm. but I feel like a lot of times I'm not doing a good job as a husband. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like. A bit, like I feel like because this is such a difficult thing to do to master and it's husbandship no no like specifically me dealing with my feelings okay. this is something I don't have a lot of experience in mm -hmm. in my own life um, it's hard so and you've, you've you I don't want to say use or complain but you've mentioned it a lot mm -hmm. you know over the last I feel like in different forms over the last couple of years mm -hmm. you know at first it was like we don't really talk that much or we're not talking about deep stuff or our conversations are very service level. And now, and now you've got, you've drilled down to like the exact thing. Let us do this podcast, Thomas. <laughs> that was funny. Enough. I mean, you're just being a jerk about it. I didn't even know there was train tracks over here. I didn't either. So anyway, Jay's like, it's so quiet. You guys yeah, it's, it's staying quiet and the house is cold in weather. there. So anyway, uh, you you're asking me to do that. And I feel like, man, I, if I don't get this. You are eventually going to stop asking you. You know, this is one of my this is me going down the long, right. you know, way. And I actually told you this. I'm like, man, you're, you're going to get you're going to get sad. You're going to feel like I don't want to open up to you. Then you're going to stop asking. Then you're going to want to leave me. And that's really what, like, I, I don't know if you know, but you, I, I, when we have tense arguments, I ask Melissa, 
can we end with a hug or something because you have a tough argument or you know discussion or whatever and then you just go to sleep i be feeling like that bed be feeling huge yeah, yeah, yeah. you know and all you do is turn around you went to sleep that night and i couldn't sleep and i was like look at her over there just sleep she's just fine with all this and i'm over here i can't <laughs> sleep you know but when i hugged you i was crying yeah i don't know if you knew no. i was good tears was wet <laughs> And then this morning at the airport, you just sitting in the airport next to you, and I just got put my head on your lap. I was crying in the airport all in public. I oh, know. I was like, what's happening? I'm like, man, this is what you asked for. It's too much. It's too much. But you're not. I think you. He has to be on the other side of the tracks by now. It is. I think the second part of the work that's involved with this is putting, and this is what I was saying to you before, is like putting words to those tears. <laughs> use, use your, use your, use your, I don't know what these tears mean. I, I it, was well, using them. No. That's what led to the tears. Today? Yeah, remember I told you this morning? Oh, I was I sad all day yesterday. You thought I was mad at you. And I was just in a funk because I was just like, man, this is really hard for me. I'm not, I don't feel like I'm doing a good, you know, maybe that's it. I feel like in my life, I only do things that I'm really good at. Which I was going to say that, but I didn't know if you wanted that to be said. But I think that you naturally shy away from things that you don't feel like come easy to you. Yes. And so this is an opportunity to stretch yourself and grow. <laughs> because if it's hard for you to me that's good that means this is your growth this is something that that's why i oh i don't i'm never and i said this to you before um when we we can we have an assistant and her name's candace and there was like a period of transition um because we're used to doing things a certain way kevin's used to doing things a certain way you hired this person to kind of lift that burden but you still kind of want to like control mm -hmm. it and so she's like do y'all want to keep me on as an employee or not Cause like you're not gonna pay me and I'm doing nothing I'll quit first um, and I'm like I enjoy these conversations because they help me grow I will never meet your expectations if you don't tell me what they are and so even if I have a hard time achieving them at least I know what I'm striving for you know what I mean? Yeah. Like I'm willing to like grow and expand. So I'm like always here for the difficult conversations that are productive, not like just screaming. They should end with sex though, for me. I would feel like, you know how when you like tell a dog to roll over and then he does, then you give him like a begging strip. I want a, I want a coochie strip. <laughs> you stop talking. <laughs> but if, you, if we had sex after, I'd be like, man, this is gonna be tough. But at the end, this is what I gonna get. Can you imagine how much I would talk if I knew that was going to be at the end? What else do you have to say? No, I, I agree. I think, remember, that's why I switched from, uh, that's why I stopped playing the bass. Why? Because I was like, man, I'm not going to be as good as these other people are. Let me uh, focus on the stuff that I'm good at. You mean before or right now? Well, I just stopped right now because I didn't have no time. Yeah. Um, and it's funny because I was working on the piano because the piano is much harder than the bass because of that same thing, like, uh, last time uh, because when things are, I, I'm good at a lot of stuff mm -hmm. and I work at a lot of stuff like stand up like for for whatever reason I enjoyed the work part of that right, right, of right, like right. I really enjoy the tough part of building a new joke in a new segment which becomes a new hour like that is hard too yeah, yeah, like yeah. I'm good at that but it is it is hard yeah. and it gets harder when you're like Kevin on stage oh man he gotta be you know what I mean yeah. people want a polished hour whenever they see you right. but you you know you need time to do that but with this you're asking I, I feel like i'm having to develop a uh a lot of skills at once yeah that's what i was gonna say you're familiar with the work that's involved for comedy right so there's no fear in that like yeah it's gonna be hard but also i'm very aware of what's expected and I've i know before, and, and there's also it. the laughter factor if this works you laugh if it yeah. you don't laugh it didn't work yeah this is not a there's not a laugh you know there's not a uh it's not a one for one like immediate payoff yes so it's like so you know one thing you were you had asked me to, and that's the other thing it's like i feel like as i grow and i get better at some things you don't bring them up 
-hmm. but but new things replace them you know what i mean because you're ever like shifting and evolving and you know so in our you know it was like uh you, you, a couple of months ago or maybe a year ago you're like you sometimes you feel like i share on social media before i even talk with you mm -hmm. like on periscope or whatever so i worked on that but there's no like dang yeah okay you know what man you did great mm -hmm. I asked you to do that, and I noticed there hasn't been no situation where you've done that. Mm -hmm. So, and I, so I forget about it. Right. You know what I mean? So there's no immediate or like delayed, uh, like you've done a good job at this. Right. It just gets replaced with, uh, you know what I mean? Like yeah, yeah. I feel like I don't I don't know if this is coming off of like you know wrong, but you know we're always trying to work on being our better self. So right. you know I don't know. It just feels like there's not the next. There's not a. Uh, in, in actual life, it's not as simple as a, a, a joke that gets a laugh. You go on about your day because it's not. There's no way to do that. Yeah. Like you don't see me not going on Periscope, right. and or you, you don't see me on Periscope not sharing stuff. You just see me talking to you first. Mm -hmm. So there's not a there's not a time to reward that behavior. But uh, this particular thing, so um, it's like working out. Yeah. I when I work out, I do. You know, Greg was like, you 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 can do a. Start by doing 100 push-ups a day, and I ain't done them in a couple of days. But I did that, and then I did up to 120. So now the result is I can, I can bench 220 pounds, right. 25 pounds, nine times. That is a direct correlation of the work I put in. Yeah. Emotional work doesn't have that same thing. It's Fitness is very different. Yeah, it, uh, but that is definitely emotional work. Is very invisible work, and sometimes yes. it's not very tangible. Yeah. Um, however, working out is something that is tangible. You right. see the results in the way that you feel and the way that your body looks, and that's very rewarding, and that will motivate you to um, keep going. And you and Doughboy are closing in on your... No, we called the bed off. You called the bed off. We called it off for a good reason, though. One, he was working out too hard mm -hmm. and going, uh, pushing himself too much. And two, we had different goals. Yeah. He was trying to drop weight. I'm trying to get stronger and in shape. So I'm, my body is changing in a way that I like, but I but I haven't lost a lot of, phys phys of actual pounds. Sure, sure, sure. So it just wasn't healthy anymore. You really got to run your own fitness race 100%. And, com and compare yourself to your old self, not to somebody else. That's actually really good advice. And that's a great thing about Open Fit. It allows you to get your summer body ready and the way that makes the most sense for you. It allows you to do a personalized, customized fitness journey, and it's going to help you from the inside out. The journey to self-love, the self journey to self-discovery, the journey to loving yourself always starts with the mind. It always starts on the inside. And then um, once you love the way that you are looking, acting as is, it's so much better to evolve and change and become the person that you want to be. So Open Fit takes the, all the complexity out of losing weight and getting fit. It's a brand new, simple, sim super simple streaming service that allows you to work out from the comfort of your living room in as little as 10 minutes a day. They have yoga, which sometimes we all know yoga can be um, intimidating and embarrassing if you don't know what mm -hmm. you're doing. So allowing you the opportunity to do that in the privacy of your own home without that embarrassment is great. They have yoga, they have 600 second workouts, they have nutrition guides where they teach you uh, meal prep and cooking tips and nutrition tips and weight loss tips vitamins supplements all of these things how to sleep better and all of these tips and tricks are on their website to again allow you to arm yourself with the tools in order to meet and achieve your weight loss goals open fit has changed the way we work out and if you text our code love to 30 30 30 you can join us on our fitness journey personalized just for you right now during the open fit 30 day challenge our listeners get an special extended 30 day free trial membership to open fit when you text love that's L-O-V-E to 30, 30, 30. You will get full access to Open Fit, all the workouts and nutrition information totally free. Again, just text LOVE to 30, 30, 30. Standard message and data rates may apply. What else applies in your conversation <laughs> right now? So what's important, I think, is that um, <laughs> one of the things I keep hearing you say, and I don't know how to remedy that, is that you... So I did ask you, like, I need your feedback in saying, you know, what's important to you. If that feedback is important, like, explain to me how you want that to look. 
so that way I can incorporate that in our, you know what I mean? If you need that pat on the back, you need that. Oh yeah, I'm words of affirmation boy. So then I, I so, thought about it, I, but I don't, I couldn't come up with anything. I'm gonna need your help because that's not second nature to me. So I won't do it. I don't require it. I don't need it. And so I don't know what to look for. And so it is important to me that you provide examples or demonstrate what that looks like so I can do it in a way that you'll recognize as a thank you, as affirmation, as, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, but the other thing that, um, and that is important, I really do, I think that, I, I actually think that that is a tip for everyone. A lot of times um, we are asking of our, spell, our spouses to give us something that isn't second nature to them. Otherwise they would have been doing it. The emotional stuff isn't second nature. Yes, and so demonstrating that to you when i'm open to you i'm demonstrating that be behavior you know what i mean mm -hmm. um allowing that time and space so you can see how it's done so that way you can just replicate that um and that's all i'm asking and but i started thinking too and i actually mentioned this before and i'm thinking about uh starting this as a family uh, when we do our nightly affirmations is doing a stop start thank you so when we were in banking, we did a stop, start, continue, mm -hmm. which every year <clears throat> with your, you, did, you had your annual evaluation with your manager and they asked, what is one, so I'm the manager, Kev's the employee. And he would say, this is one thing as my manager, I want you to start. This is something I need you to do. This is one thing that you do that I think it's great and I want you to continue. This is one thing that you do and I want you to stop. Mm -hmm. So every year we did a start, start, stop, continue. I did a start, stop, thank you. One thing, maybe it should be continue, start, continue, <laughs> and thank you, regardless. The point is that I want the stop thank you. Stop has to be in there though. Start, start, continue, thank you. Maybe. Okay. Um, the point is that I wanted to make sure that we as a family have an opportunity to say thank you. Mm -hmm. um, and it doesn't have to be I was trying to think because I don't want it to be like dumb and a task but maybe once a month or once a week or something like that where we each have an opportunity to say um, I noticed you did this this week maybe I didn't say thank you in the mo moment but I want you to know that I thank you for that yeah I just thought of it so when we have these and this might sound cheesy but I don't care I need it uh, when we have when we have those conversations that you feel like this was the type of conversation I was looking for or these type of statement anything that you notice that I've done like at first you were like you, you know you were like man you you do when we were especially we're going to doing the business together you're like you were saying you do uh, you do stuff without consulting me at all yeah and you just do it you present it to me as a as a done idea mm -hmm. and not a thought and I you know so I was working like to not do that so what if you when you hear the conversations that you desire from me or you feel like i've shared something in a way that you like okay this is what i'm talking about you could say this is an uh an example of a conversation that that i'm i'm looking for gotcha. like if you say thank you for for you know um bringing this to me first or ask my opinion first because then it triggers in my it's it's pavlov's dogs you know uh thing and if we have those conversations because i would be asking you i was i was i remember asking you one time like is this what you this type of conversation you're like uh you want and you were like if you if you have to ask it just makes it weird it nullifies it mm -hmm. but i'm asking not to just so i know because i don't want to feel like this is wasted motion or feel like this is what you were looking for and it wasn't you know what i mean so if it's if any any time it clicks in your head that we've had an interaction or a series of interactions even if it doesn't have to be in the moment if you you know if it comes to you later like man that was a great conversation yeah i can i felt like you know you know we got closer mm -hmm. you know that would be very helpful to me because it it one reminds me that i've the work has been seen and two, it it presents a picture of something that um, I can something I, you reference. Right? I can reference back again. Okay, so I wonder how many people. So we're talking a little bit about like love languages right now, and um, 
your love language, one of your love languages, words of affirmation. And part of the reason, like, the love language is so, like, revolutionary and transformative in relationships is because it does provide um, a baseline for what it means to love your spouse. In a way that they perceive love. Right. Which I think is the most important part of it. Yeah. Because a lot of times we think we are doing things that they love, but if they don't perceive that as loving, then it doesn't count. Right. Yeah, I think the, the love languages are so transformative because like you said, it helps you to love your spouse in the way that they perceive love. And um, I mean, and it's hard because it does stretch you in a way. Like, I, I think our love languages are like literally mm -hmm. the opposite of one another. Yours uh, is quality time and um, acts of acts service. Acts of service. I think when I was- We don't share any. Some A lot of couples share at least one. When you say a lot, who have you talked to? Uh, seven people. <laughs> I always try to, I'm trying to remember to do that because I think you are really good about, um, follow the word that I'm about to make up, uniquifying. <laughs> Sound like a black girl. Our situation. And what I have found, meaning everyone else has this and for whatever reason, our story is the opposite of that. And what I find is that the opposite is actually true. We're more common than we think. The more you share your story, the more people relate to it. Mm. And I believe that there are more people who identify with us than there are that does it. Even if it's just like, oh, well, my husband is more of Melissa and my wife is more right. of Kev. But outside of that, it's yeah. the same. I think that that is more common than not. And I think that's actually part of the um, the success of the podcast is that relatability. And so I'm always cautious about... Um, uniquifying things? Yes, uniquifying. <laughs> because what I have found... That sounds like it could be a word. It could be. I don't... It's definitely not, I'm sure. But what I have found is that in our younger years of marriage, I always felt it makes us feel broken when you're like everyone else shares except for us well then what's wrong with us you know what i mean mm -hmm. and that's actually not the case um and so i'm always just like i i never I, especially in this time of my life and especially as I, I like read and you know do all of these things i'm always very acutely aware of the story that i tell myself and if i'm always the one that's different then eventually you will feel broken. Mm. You will feel like our relationship is broken. Yeah. And that's just not the case. And so I want to be careful about the way that I frame, right. um, you know, that. I feel like um, when we t when we do the live uh, Love Hour uh, uh, last year, we um, more specifically than this year, we talked about uh, um, when women ask what's wrong yeah. and we say nothing. Yeah. And... And it's, I think it's from that book on waffling. Mm -hmm. uh, but I see all the men when I say when I say uh, not not what's wrong. You say what's on your mind. Well, I think that that is something that is gender normative. Mm -hmm. So I think that there are um, that is something that may be more common with men than women. Yeah. yeah. But um, anyway, I don't even know why I said that. No. But anyway, I'm tired of feeling all these emotions. That's what I want to say. Um. But I feel like I can't go back to the like, old way. I was like, but the thing about it is, you can't go back at this point. Uh, well, uh, I think if I do the work to do it, you, I need you to do the same work to appreciate it, and that'll that's fine. That'll make it easier to do because it is. It's not. It's and, and that's the thing that's funny about it. It's not like I ever did it ever. It's not like riding a bike. Right? As a kid, I used to ride a bike, bike every day. And you haven't ridden for a while, and it takes a second to be like, oh, man, you know what I mean? Like, it's not hard, but you just take a second. This is, I feel like they, I am having to develop a new skill yeah. that, but, but, with the, but the stakes are very high. It's with my yeah, kids. I, it with, it's with you. It's with my real dad stuff. You know what I mean? Like, that's probably the reason we're going to go to therapy when the, when the tour is over to maybe help with those some of those skills like learning how to um identify those things therefore being able to therefore it'll be able to share it man because when we were talking in ohio remember i was crying the other night uh when i was talking about my childhood stuff oh yeah and i was like man you th these are th these are some things that i'm saying 
for the first time ever right, right, out right, loud. Right. For the, you're asking me to process things that I have never processed ever. Yeah, that's why you need to go to therapy. I, I, I agree. I'm going to be crying. <laughs> I'm going to be a mess up in there. But, you know, I don't want to be. I don't want to be guarded to you, which means I have to open up to myself. Right. And that part is. It's just hard. Because in order to move forward, you just be like, all right, man, you know, forget it. I'm, I'm moving forward. And, and I've done a good job of that. But it's, you know, just like we talk about in the podcast, the, the Love Our Live, Melissa 2.0 won't allow emotionally guarded Kevin to, yeah. that won't work anymore. And that worked for a long time in our yeah, marriage. Yeah. 15 years of it. Mm -hmm. 14 of the 15, 14 and a half. Mm -hmm. Like, but now it's like, nah. So in order for us to keep moving closer into this next phase of this next year and, and, and beyond what I used to be able to get away with, I can't. Right. And that's what it's just like, man, this is going to be tough. It just feels like, um, yeah, like it, it's, it's just going to be tough. And it's, you know, having to learn to do something for the first time is always difficult. But but some of that stuff hasn't been accessed at all. And it, the thought of having to really get in there emotionally and process some of that stuff Ugh, I just don't look forward to that at all I really don't I just it's like having to have knee surgery you're just like man I need I really need this so I can be better but the thought of having to like have surgery and then have rehab is just like uh that's probably the reason I never got my shoulder repaired I know because it was like having six months of of rehab I just don't I'll I'll just let it be broken in which I have done so I've done this with my own body. I was like, this, that was a whole word. That was a whole. They told me that the rehab was six months. I was like, I'll, I'll keep it broke. But the but the word behind, I don't want to do the work. I'd rather be broken. Oh, that was the word? Yes. Oh, I don't even know. I'd be saying so much great stuff. I don't even know what you Hello. commenting on. <laughs> um, anything else you want to add? Reward me with sex. You laughed. But quality sex is my number one love language. First of all, quality sex is not a love language. That's first of all. Um, yeah, I think we. What has to happen is, yeah, we need therapy. <laughs> we need individual therapy and then couples therapy. Yeah. All individual right. first. I'm going to individual. Therapy. I'm going. Anything else? <laughs> no. Thank you guys so much for joining us on the Love Hour. Um, I'm your host, Ms. Kev on stage. He is Kev on stage. We want to tell you about, we have like six more dates more left of the tour. Um, the next ones are, don't worry about by the time this comes out. But if you're in North Carolina or New York, you can still get your tickets in August. No Love Hour in New York. Right. There's no Love Hour. No, I know. Oh, they said if you're in New York. There's still tickets available for the comedy show. Oh, shoot. There's probably 20 tickets left to that show. Uh, I forgot to check. Uh, well, there's the, the Thursday sold out. The Wednesday, there is tickets left. This uh, would be... Toronto, this week, there's still some tickets left. Yeah, Toronto's... Oh, uh, not many, though. Uh, nope. Both New York shows just sold okay, out. Okay, so lie. So if you're in uh, North Carolina, <laughs> there will be both shows, and you can go to that. That's at the end of... August and then the love hour conference we haven't talked much about but that is still going on VIP is sold out but um, general admission is still open um, that's it thank you guys so much for joining us thank you to our sponsors uh, ship station brewmate third love and open fit thank you for supporting the podcast and um, that's it we'll see you bye next time.